1981, Jack Welch became the leader of General Electric, the youngest CEO in the history of the most storied corporation in America. He was a fearless leader. And throughout his 19 year run, he became one of the most widely respected CEOs to ever run a company. And in 2000, Jack, who at this point was one of the most iconic business leaders in the history of America, stepped down as the CEO of GE. Many wondered how the company would replace Jack Welch. Many assumed that GE would die. At the very least, you know, GE had its best days in the past. You know, perhaps I'm a little geeky in that I follow corporate transitions like this, but I was curious who would replace Jack Welch. When Mr. Welch handpicked his replacement, Jeffrey Amelt, I was surprised. Jeffrey Amelt was nothing like Jack. Jack was a small yet fiery leader. Jeffrey Amelt was a tall and steady voice of calm. This didn't make sense. I thought that success would continue if they replaced the amazing leader with a similar one. And I imagine others in the world questioned that choice much like I did. I even wonder if Jeffrey Amelt asked a question like, who, me? We've been in a series following the journey of the Israelites from their slavery in Egypt to the promised land. And the man leading that group of people was iconic. He was a big deal. He faced off with Pharaoh, led God's people out of slavery in Egypt. He was the leader through the desert. He was the guy who physically brought them the Ten Commandments and who spoke to God on their behalf. Moses was the hero for the people of Israel, including Joshua himself, who we talked about last week. Israel had spent their lives following Moses towards the promised land, and now with the sight of the promised land, they faced another pivotal moment. Here's what the Bible says. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. As their sights were set on the promised land before them, Moses died. And guess who was in line to take his place? Joshua. He had been Moses' assistant, and now he was the guy who was supposed to fill his shoes. And I guarantee you that there was one simple question rattling around in his brain. Who, me? It was quickly followed by, are you kidding? Moses parted the Red Sea. I can barely part my own hair. I can't fill this guy's shoes. I'm just a regular guy. Here's a truth. Who you think you are impacts everything about your attitude and your performance. And that's where Joshua found himself. As he faced down his huge new assignment, he found himself asking, who am I? And how he answered that question would determine whether or not he would step forward. Well, it appears that Joshua started to do what many of us do when life comes at us with opportunities that have the potential to affect our future. He began to focus not on who he is, but on who he is not. He probably told himself, I'm not Moses. I'm not a great leader. I'm not a miracle worker. I'm not a military general. I'm not even that smart. I'm not even that old or wise. I'm not even that holy. Does that sound familiar? Of course it does. We do this all the time. We all have a tendency to build our identity around who we are not. Since you were little, there's always been someone faster, someone taller, someone prettier, someone in line for the promotion before you. And as we get older, that tendency doesn't go away. Even for those of us who might be retired with grandchildren, we still feel the need to live up to a standard and we still struggle with all the things we're not. I bet when it comes to who you are, you spend way more time thinking about who you're not, you know, what you can't do, what you haven't accomplished, than you do focusing on what you can do or what you can accomplish. We've trained ourselves to only see what we are not. And focusing on who we are not will stop any forward motion in your life. Forward motion is impossible unless we begin to see who we are. In fact, we'll miss being who God has created us to be. When we don't know who we are, we face some negative side effects. For example, we compare. When you try to determine how you rank against other people, eventually all you can see is how much you don't measure up. 
You're not sure who you are or if you're enough. So you start looking around to the left and right. And that's how we become insecure or jealous, discouraged about life. Not only do we compare, we also clasp. When you feel the wind of God pulling you in a new direction, there's a tendency to clasp onto something that gives you the illusion of safety. Maybe you clasp onto a relationship. Or maybe you clasp onto a job. Maybe you clasp onto a possession. Or maybe you clasp onto an addiction. When you don't know who you are, it feels safe to clasp onto what you know, even if it's not true or good. And then we also cower. When you're unsure of who you are, the insecurity shows. You may accept jobs or relationships that aren't God's best for you because you don't think you deserve anything better. When you never know who you are, you never feel worthy to receive something new. Many people step back from what God has created them to do simply because they're afraid that they don't have what it takes. If you don't know who you are, you aren't likely going to take steps forward. The steps may seem misguided or without purpose. Comparing, clasping, or cowering, all are different ways to undermine our forward motion. So imagine Joshua standing there realizing that the iconic leader, his hero and mentor, Moses, had died. And Joshua is now in charge. Imagine what he must have felt The people still needed to go forward into the promised land. Joshua may have even been tempted to go backward. But God intervened and gives a powerful, powerful speech. He says this, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. That you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Did you notice that God repeated the phrase, be strong and courageous? He said it over and over again. He said it three times, and it wasn't a mistake. There's a reason God kept repeating himself. That's because it was so important that Joshua get this. While Joshua was focused on who he wasn't, God spoke into who he could be, a strong and courageous leader of his people. And notice that God didn't think Joshua could be strong and courageous because he had a certain set of skills. No, it's because of God. Look what God says. Be strong and courageous for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's as if God was saying to Joshua, Joshua, you're so focused on who you're not that you've missed one really important thing, who I am. Because I am God. I can do anything. I'm strong, able, I'm mighty, I'm good, I'm loving, and I'm powerful. And most importantly, Joshua, I am with you. So I'm here to tell you who you are. You're not Joshua the scared, Joshua the not ready, Joshua the too young, or Joshua the weak. No, you're Joshua the strong and courageous because I am with you. So go live like it, Joshua, and go lead like it. And that's what I want you to take away from early on in Joshua's career as leader of the Israelites. Who Joshua was didn't even matter in light of who God is. Did you catch that? Who Joshua was not, all the ways he wasn't the man for the job, were insignificant because of who God is. Or to put it simply, who God is, is more important than who you are not. And who God is was more important than who Joshua was not. In fact, at the end of the day, who God is, is the only thing that really matters. Just like with us, God could see what Joshua couldn't. He saw who Joshua was, and he wasn't bothered by who Joshua wasn't. 
God still needed Joshua and the children of Israel to go forward. The same is true for many of us. God has asked you to step forward, but forward motion is impossible unless we begin to see who we are and that God is always with us. And God gives you the same speech that he gave to Joshua because what was true for Joshua is true for us too. God is with you wherever you go. So be strong and courageous. For many of us to experience forward motion in our faith and in our life, we need to believe that God is with us. Maybe our confidence has shrunk down, but it doesn't matter how skilled we are or how confident we are in those skills, God is with us so we can be strong and courageous. Maybe an enemy seems overwhelming, It doesn't matter if we're strong enough to defeat it. God is with us, so we can be strong and courageous. Maybe we haven't thought of who we are. We've only thought of who we are not. The Bible says that since God is with you, you are more than a conqueror. Because God is your perfect father, you are a beloved child of the King. Because God lives inside of you through his spirit, The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. This is who you are, more than a conqueror, beloved, royal child, powerful warrior. So be strong and courageous. You are more than equipped to take a step forward. And then, once we know who we are, we know what to do. And once we know that God is always with us, we have the courage to step forward. One step of faith is to believe that who God is is more important than who you are not. In many ways, this series isn't about doing something you've never done. It's simply about being who you already are. As we conclude, think about the steps you need or want to take forward. You know what you need to do. Now let me ask this question. Who are you? Remember, God is with you. So would you be willing to be strong and courageous when it comes to the job before you? Would you be willing to be strong and courageous when it comes to your relationships? Or as you raise your teenagers? Or as you break an addiction? Or as you face turning an age that you never imagined? Whatever it is, decide today to believe that God is with you and He will give you everything you need to take a step forward. Who God is matters more than who you're not. And because he is with you, you can be strong and courageous. As we close this series, I I want you to think about what the promised land is for you. For Israel, it was a homeland of their own and a life outside of slavery. And in the same way that God called the Hebrew people, he is calling you. It might seem impossible from where you sit. It might seem impossible because of what you haven't done or who you are not. But the entire Bible is about a God who says that your past doesn't have to dictate your future. The only thing that matters is who God says you are and where he's calling you next. So be bold. Take a step forward, even if it's a little step, because all forward motion leads to a better life and living a better story.